Welcome to Gaby Snake Goodies. I am Gaby and this is a giant bag of finished knits. Hand knits all by me. Um, this is almost everything I knit in 2023 and I'm going to go through each one briefly with you and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoy kind of walking memory lane with my knits here. So this is quite heavy and it's totally full and I actually have some things that I knit that I gave away as gifts. Um, so if I can, I will get a picture and put them at the end. All right. So I'll start with these that my daughter was wearing earlier. Before I start, again, Gaby Snake goodies. Um, you can find me on Etsy where my hand dyed yarn is, as well as on Instagram at Gaby Snake goodies. And my yarn has its own little Instagram handle where I put, um, pictures and reels of me dyeing yarn or sending yarn and things like that. And that's GKG yarn on Instagram. And then, um, I am on Ravelry, but I'm not real super active. I even have a group for the podcast, but I haven't been active on that lately. So anyways, um, welcome. I'm excited to talk about my knits. So here is one. This is in no particular order. This was actually a gift knit for my daughter and these are the Pioneer um, gloves, Pioneer gloves. It's a Bangalore's Mittens free pattern on Ravelry or at least that's where I found it and it is a ribbed, they look super teeny tiny but because they're ribbed they stretch really easy and they're very cute so they have increases on one um, one side and not the other. And the pattern does have it so there is a left and a right little mitt. And these are made out of Ocean Cliffs colorway. And my daughter has already worn them a good bit and gotten them stuck on Velcro right here. So they, they have a little fuzz to them um, where she got them connected to the Velcro and had to pull them off. But very warm and cute and I just had leftover yarn, um, fingering weight yarn in my Ocean Cliffs colorway. So these are very cute and a fairly quick uh, knit. The part that took me the longest was just deciding to actually finish the little thumb part. The rest of it was super quick. All right, this is um, cardigan number five by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And it is a, a fingering weight, all over ribbed tank top. I did not love the process of knitting that much ribbing in fingering weight, um, but I think the finished garment is cute. This is my buttercream colorway. And um, I like the finishing on this, like the way she's done her increases and decreases, as well as um, the double, double knit edging. I think that's what we call it here on the side. It just really gives it a, um, a very nice finish to it. So this, the way it fits, it comes in a lot here at the shoulders, which I think does look pretty cute, but it does cause problems with, you know, what undergarments you wear. I did find actually a sports bra that I had that worked with this, um, that angle like perfectly. And once I discovered that, I was able to wear it more. Um, it's kind of cold now, but in the spring, I think this will be a great one to wear. It'll be good to be able to wear it and have like a layer on top and then um, when it's hot, you can take it off and then it, when it cools down, you know, put on that extra layer. I think it'll work well in the spring. This one, I'm calling my cloud cardigan. I have not written a pattern for it, but I did kind of make it up myself. It is a top-down raglan. 
simple raglan. It kind of has a little twist to it, but I have, it was knit on size seven needles holding kid mohair in my silver mist colorway along with um, Maleficent fingering weight merino. And so it's kind of a, almost like a DK worsted weight when held together. So it was pretty, fairly quick. So it was on size US 7s. And like I said, it is a top down, but because of the cardigan, you're knitting back and forth instead of in the round that I split for my sleeves once I had the width I liked. Um, and it's also kind of a V-neck. So I would do increases. Like I started off kind of small and then I did increases here along the front as well until I got it as wide. Um, the front as wide as the back. Um, and then I put these sleeve stitches back on the needles and I knit kind of like bell sleeves. Um, I didn't do any decreases. I wanted the little puffed sleeve at the end. And I did an I-cord edging instead of a ribbing because I just thought that looked really cute. I really like this cardigan and I wore it well before I ever added a button band to the front. I actually just added the button band not long ago. Um, so now I actually have a regular button band. I'll try to find a picture of me wearing it. And I just have some little buttons I had at the house. They're little like black plastic buttons. So not my favorite buttons. So I kind of like to um, change out the buttons and get some slightly bigger ones. I have small holes for my buttonholes so I don't need anything too big. But it was like something just a little, I don't know, a little nicer for it. I do really like that cardigan though. It's very comfy and warm and cozy, but just like it has a nice drape to it. And the mohair makes it feel luxurious. All right. Next one. If I can figure out the right side. Here we go. Okay. This is the lovely sweater number 21, I believe, by My Favorite Things Knitwear. And it is, has these big giant holes. It's a fairly quick knit because um, it's worked with large needles and you do all these big holes. It's kind of an interesting construction too. I think I have a whole video on it that I'll try to link in a card or something. Um, it has very long sleeves. In fact, if I were to knit this again, I'd probably knit the sleeves just a tad shorter because they kind of get in the way. And it has a nice little split on the side, which I think is cute. The Hilo hem. Um, so, like I said, it has long sleeves that can kind of get in the way. So I actually crocheted a little strand and wove it in. I don't know if you can see that very well. To cinch in right here at the ankle. Not at the ankle, at the wrist. Um, so that I would have a little bit of, like, a stopping point for my sleeves. Because they are very long, so they'll go, like, all the way down if I let them like pass my fingertips. So if I cinch this up, then it's stuck right here at my wrist. And then I kind of like my sweaters to be cozy and come a little bit down on my wrist or on my hand, but not like past my fingers. So um, that has helped make this more of a wearable garment. But I really do like it, and it is super squishy and soft. I held three yarns together. This is um, Golden Halo Kid Mohair and Silk. These are all yarns I dyed myself. Um, then I have my Coffee with Cream is the Merino Fingering Weight. And then I did Surrey Alpaca in that same caramel, um, camel colorway. 
So all of those held together make a super like light, fluffy, super squishy, and lots of halo. Lots and lots of halo. I hope you can see all the halo that's going on in there. Lots of fuzz. That's a very fun sweater though. If you're looking for something fun to knit, I would recommend it. And just something a little different. Let's see. Don't think we're this. Easy V sweater. This. I have loved this sweater. It kind of surprised me, I guess, um, how much I've gravitated to grabbing this particular sweater. Um, this is the Easy V by Caitlin Hunter Boylan Knitworks. It is a top-down um, v-neck sweater. It's a yoked color work, but a very simple color work sweater. Um, but part of the uniqueness of this is this neckline. So you cast on here and then do kind of like raglan increases as well as increases at the front and back to make that v-neck that's just mirrored on the front and back. There's no short rows or anything to change um, the height of the back. It's just the same. Um, and then there's some color work on the sleeves as well. So I knit this up in a worsted weight, 100% merino yarn um, that I dyed. I did modify the pattern in that I used two colorways for my color work that I just dyed up as opposed to I think she had four spin cycle yarns for the yoke color work. And I did it so that they weren't high, high contrast here. Um, yeah, I like how it turned it, how it turned out. I do plan on dyeing some of this colorway up and putting it in my shop, but I have not done it yet. But I love this and I grab it, I think partly because, um, it feels like a sweatshirt, like the fabric feels like a sweatshirt and it cinches in just a little bit at the waist, kind of like a sweatshirt would, but it's got a lot of room, width room-wise. And then I think that the v-neck just makes it so you don't, I don't get too hot in it. So I can wear it, I could even push up the sleeves, and I don't get too hot. But then it also keeps me cozy and warm when I want it to. Um, Whereas a sweater, like especially like a worsted weight sweater that's all the way up at my neck, um, I guess more like this one, although this one's wide so it has a lot of room to breathe as well. Um, it can, if it's warm inside, I can not want to necessarily wear it because it's a little too, I don't know, stifling around my neck. So yeah, I really like this wide neck. It just worked out really well for me. And I, I pick it up and wear it kind of like I would if it was a sweatshirt, which I think is fantastic. I didn't talk about what I'm wearing. This is another one I made by Caitlin Hunter, Boylan Knitworks. Um, this is the Tecumseh sweater. And it is like a very wide, top-down, colorwork sweater with these big stripes. And it's meant to have a lot of positive ease. And I knit it like the pattern stated without any modifications. This one is a DK weight. Um, you split for your sleeves like really far down, like right above your elbow almost. So it's got a little bit of a cross crossover with like a poncho-esque in some ways, but not, not too poncho-like. It looks like a sweater. Um, because it's big, and wide and a little bit on the long side. I'm actually wearing it with leggings today. So again, it can be kind of like a sweatshirt. So I really like that. Colorways, again, it's DK Merino Nylon and Dark and Stormy. The little green crosses are matcha and um, this is coffee with cream. All right. 
This one I recently finished, and it took me a while. But it's beautiful. And I actually wore it to like a Christmas party with some gold jewelry layered up on it and it looked really pretty. This is the Cardi V-neck by Anne Vincel. And I held one strand of kid mohair and silk with a strand of merino nylon in fingering weight. And it has a lovely halo. And it has all over little pattern. Um, I did do a whole video on this one as well. It has this lovely v-neck that has this a little crossover right there at the front. And you knit the neckline as you go so you don't pick up stitches, which is kind of fun. And it kind of has that big sleeve and it's wide and cozy. Um, I did knit mine a little bit shorter than the pattern recommended but it's worked well to wear with jeans like that, which is primarily what I do. Um, yeah, so I like this and I'm very proud of it because it is a, um, it's a pretty massive knit when you have all over pattern like that, I think. So I like it and I think in the spring, this one will be good too on the colder days because it's white so it's and it's light because it's not um, like it's not super thick but it's plenty warm because it's got the mohair in it um, and again having an open neckline helps it not be too warm on like a spring day on a cool spring day a warm spring day it would still be too warm that mohair does add a lot of warmth I will warn you if you do mohair silk add it to anything It'll give you warmth for sure. All right. Next item here. Isn't this cute? This is the Sarah tank. It is a free pattern on a yarn website. I will put the link down below. All the links are down below. Um, I knit it out of DK weight merino nylon with um, the colorway caramel macchiato and it is a reverse fisherman rib so it has some lovely texture but on the inside you see that fisherman rib um, I do like her choice of reversing it and having just these little like I don't know the nice it has a nice little texture and you knit the, the edging here and the button band all at the same time. You don't pick up that, which is nice because I don't love picking up stitches. Um, yeah, I have some little wooden buttons I thought went pretty well. I don't think I did the perfect job lining up my buttons, though. I have a little too much space right here. That's okay. It's cute. My daughter wanted to steal it, but the straps are way too long for her. Well, the whole thing's just too big for her. One day she'll be able to steal it. Now, I used only one skein, so 100 grams of the DK Weight Caramel Macchiato. However, it is somewhat cropped. So if you did not want a cropped version, you would probably need um, closer to 150 grams of whatever yarn you're using. This beauty is the Half and Half Triangles Wrap by Pearl Soho, a free pattern. It is in fingering weight yarn, flowers and dirt, merino, nylon, fingering weight, and dark and stormy. And they go very well together. And I wear it primarily just um, like this under a coat. The fingering weight yarn is nice 
um, when it's doubled up like this as opposed to like a worsted weight yarn doubled up because it doesn't give too much bulk and weight um, but when you double it up like this it gives plenty of warmth around your neck and it's just lovely and it's the the design is kind of cool having the two colors it, it kind of gives you some options and stuff and how you style it so I think it is pretty cool and it's garter stitch so it's a lovely mindless knit and I still since I took this off my needles I have been missing that like knit to have around anytime you just need something to pick up and don't want to think about it because currently I have sweater number 20 the cabled one but my favorite things to wear on my needles and I am picking up stitches for a sleeve and that takes brain power to get that going and like start all those cables um, and sometimes I just want to pick up and knit without thinking so I'm looking for my next mindless knit if you guys have a suggestion let me know speaking of mindless knit this is the habitation throw Oh, it looks so pretty. It's so happy, isn't it? With all those stripes of color. Um, this is by Patterns, I think by Helen Stewart, I believe. Um, Curious Handmade, I think is like her handle and business name. Um, and this is a back and forth like garter pattern starting at a corner and you do an I cord edging as you go and you do garter with stripes of um, eyelets hopefully you can see the little eyelets um, I got a little bored and then I started adding some mohair into it and that made it super fun and then I decided not to coordinate anything and just add pops of color wherever I wanted and I really enjoyed it. These are all either mini skein sets that I have in my shop or um, leftover yarn from other projects. Uh, all stuff that I have dyed which it makes it really fun. I have definitely knit a few more items than I have in my bag and I will see if I can find pictures of any of those like I have a hat for my husband that I did that it was ribbed um, oh I have one other big one that I will talk about and other than that I'll just see if I have pictures and put them up here all right these are the simple house slippers I forget who they are by But it is a free pattern on her website. I will put the link below in the name up here as well. Simple House Slippers. It is a very easy knit. I think she has a paid for pattern you can get as well that has like different sizes. But you start knitting flat and garter. So you knit back and forth and garter. And then you knit in the round and then you do decreases for your toe. And then you um, cinch up your toe and sew up your heel. So a very quick and easy knit. And it would be really easy to modify it for different sizes. Because you could lengthen this part really easy or, um, you know, add a few more stitches to begin with to make it wider on your foot. But they also are very flexible because they're, you know, knit, knit fabric. I like them. I think they are cute. I made a ton of slippers for gift knits this year for Christmas and I did a number of crocheted ones as well. Um, if you're looking for a good crochet slipper pattern, go to make and do I think dot com or something. Again, it'll be linked down below and that she has quite a few very cute slippers. I'll put some of the ones I made for Christmas up here. Um, 
that are crocheted, which give them a lot of stiffness, so they feel more like slippers as opposed to slipper socks. And I actually used leather to add soles to them, like she did in her on her website on her slippers. So I thought that was pretty cool. I also did moon socks by Drops Design, and that is a knitting pattern made of bulky yarn, and the pattern is for free. Um, I did not add the extra big chunky cuff to um, the pair I made, or the two pairs I made, but I did add leather soles to them to make them fancier as gifts. So I have these, and the last one I have with me is just a simple hat made out of worsted weight yarn in a Nancy and the Moss Covered Rock, which is a children's book. That's what was the inspiration. This is the Alpine Bloom Tea by Caitlin Hunter of Gwyn Land Knitworks. Um, and this is knit out of Gaby's Knit Goodies hand dyed yarn. It's my own hand dyed yarn in peacock blue and new growth is the contrast color. And as you can see, I have a little extra room in this one because I knit two to three sizes larger than what the pattern would call for for my size because I actually knit this one for my mother. So mom, if you're watching, this is the spoiler. So thank you for watching and I hope you guys had fun knitting this year and I am enjoying watching other podcasters tell about all of their projects that they made this year. Um, yeah, maybe I'll even do one about what I'm planning on making. I need to do another video on my Make 9 that I developed last year around this time. Because um, I did knit a number of the things on that list, but I didn't knit everything. So that would be good to go over as well as maybe a Make 9 video for this coming year. So, I have not gotten my head wrapped around like knitting plans for this coming year yet, but that would be really fun to ponder. <laughs> I hope you guys have had lots of time to knit this year and lots of time to relax and enjoy life. And um, I hope you get to this year especially. I hope this year is even better than last year for you. Bye.